In this video, you'll be learning how to play Dragon Brood, a magical strategy game set in a medieval world called Dracodale, with castles, dragons, floating islands, and mountains of treasure. You will play as the spirit of an elder dragon who is awoken from eternal slumber in search of gold, ducats, gobloons, dragon coins, crystals, gems, jewels, and exquisite trinkets. The winner of the game is the player with the most treasure in their cave. Visit our website at astrologicgames.com and play for free on tabletopia.com. Start the game by placing the year track marker on the first year of the year track, and the season track marker on the summer space of the season track. Then, place the level 1, 2, and 3 trinkets on the appropriate trinket spaces of the main board, and place the keys to the 8 bank accounts on the corresponding spaces in the goblin bank. Place the field tiles on the main board, matching the name of the field tile with the name of the building on the board. Shuffle the six sky tiles and place one of them randomly on each of the five floating island locations at the top of the main board, and one on the elvish caravan space at the bottom left. Throughout the game, the floating islands and elvish caravan will be revealed along with the other buildings on the main board according to the number of the new year shown on the tile. Shuffle the end game bonus tiles and place one randomly on the space provided. Now, select a color and take the matching player board, dragon eggs, tiles, mountain space covers, dragon skull, and crystal ball. Place the mountain space covers on all of the mountain spaces except for the four spaces shown here. This is your income track. The icon on the left represents food. The icon in the middle represents one crystal of any of the three primary colors. And the icon on the right represents gold. All of the icons in the game can be found on page 20 of the rulebook. The mountain spaces can be uncovered throughout the game, improving the choices you have when collecting income. The six circles above your income track are where you will keep your active dragons. The two boxes on either side of the active dragons are your nurseries. Your newly hatched dragons will go in either the summer nursery or the winter nursery, depending on which season they were hatched. Your gold, ducats, gobloons, dragon coins, crystals, gems, and jewels will be stored in the boxes on the left. Notice the different ducat values of each resource. These values will be part of your score at the end of the game. You also have five dragon eggs, and a place to store food for feeding your dragons. There are also reminders found on your player board that briefly describe the abilities of the level 3 dragons in the game. We will be addressing these later in the video. Determine the player order however you wish, and place those players' dragon skulls on the turn order track on the main board. In Dragon Brood, the turn order snakes back and forth, where players begin a round by taking actions in regular turn order, and then after everyone has taken their first action, players take actions in reverse turn order starting with the player who is last. After getting back to the first player, repeat this process until all players exhaust their available actions. At the end of each round, the player's dragon skulls rotate counterclockwise, making the starting player of this round the last player in the next round. Place all of the player's crystal balls in the center of the magic track located at the top left of the main board. The magic tracks are three different tracks combined into one circular track. A player can only practice one type of magic at a time, either necromancy, alchemy, or telepathy. Each track has seven levels. Note that the bonuses on each level are not cumulative. In order to practice a different type of magic, a player, instead of moving up the track, will move laterally, sliding along the circular ring on which it resides. The fifth level has two choices, as well as the sixth, with the seventh being in between. A player must go through the sixth level to get to the seventh level. A player must also move twice to get to another type of magic on the far side of the fifth level. A player may have to move three times when on the sixth level to get to another magic track, using one move to get to the seventh level, and two more moves to get to the magic track on the far side of where they started. The magic tracks also play a large role in the end game scoring. Look at the chart below the magic track to see what the value of your position on a given track will be at the end of the game. After setting up the main board, players in turn order choose a number of level 1 dragons in any color combination equal to the amount specified in the rulebook for the given player count. In a 2-3 player game, players choose 4 dragons. In a 4-6 player game, players choose only 3 dragons. Throughout the game, you can obtain more dragons and upgrade them to be more powerful. You may even unlock the physical body of the elder dragon of your player color. Place your starting dragons on your player board along with one of the tiles in your player color underneath each one. You may not place any of your starting dragons in the center space. This space is reserved for your leader, which is the highest level dragon at your disposal 3 or greater. 
If there is a tie, choose one to be the leader. This means you cannot have six dragons until you have a dragon of level three or higher. Your leader may not be the first or the last dragon that you place in the summer. However, if you are placing a level three dragon from a nursery, it is not considered to be a leader and therefore does not follow the leader placement rule. Once everyone has selected their starting dragons, players may begin taking actions. However, there are some key aspects that need to be discussed. The first season in each year is summer, where players will, in turn order, place one dragon at a time on an available space on the left side of a chosen building on the main board. The elder dragon spaces are the only exception to this rule. There are no distance restrictions in the summer, but note that the floating islands in Elvish Caravan require a level 3 dragon to visit them. There are three types of spaces that can be found on the left side of buildings. Action, Level, and Combat. The action spaces have effects that take place immediately. The other two, Level and Combat, are not resolved in the summer and you must wait until autumn to carry out the effects of these spaces. Players will continue in the snake turn order mentioned earlier until they have no dragons left to place. Then, move the season track marker to autumn. The second season in each year is autumn. In the autumn season, you will now collect the bonuses shown on any level spaces and then carry out any combat, choosing the locations in turn order. After combat, move the season track marker to the winter. In the winter season, players move their dragons onto the right side of a chosen building instead of the left, which can either be at your current location or you can move the dragon to a new building, limiting the distance moved to the level of the dragon you are placing. Level 1 dragons can be placed up to one building away, level 2 dragons up to two buildings away, level 3 dragons up to three buildings away, and the level 4 elder dragons have no movement restrictions. If all of the buildings within your dragon's range are occupied, you must return the stuck dragon to your winter nursery. There are four types of spaces that can be found on the right side of buildings, action, level, combat, and a unique type found only in the winter called rank. The action spaces function the same as in the summer. Players will immediately carry out any effects shown, but must wait until spring to collect the bonuses shown on any level and rank spaces, or resolve any combat. Move the season track marker to spring after everyone has moved all of their dragons in the winter. The spring is very similar to autumn, with the addition of the rank spaces, where players collect bonuses based solely on the color of the dragon being placed. After collecting any resources and resolving any combat in the spring season, move the season track marker to the new year phase. In the new year phase, players will retrieve all of their dragons from the main board, feeding each dragon in the process. Unfed dragons will go to the summer nursery. New buildings are revealed, income is collected, bank account interest is gained, and the turn order is moved. Now that you understand the flow of play, let's look at an example of some of the immediate action spaces that can be taken throughout the game. If you place a dragon on the Dragon Broodmother location, you can hatch a new dragon. You may use crystals of one of the three primary colors to hatch a level 1 dragon of that color. If you wish to hatch a red dragon, and it is the summer season of the year, you pay two red crystals and two food, as well as one gold for the egg being used, the cost of which can be found on your player board. Return the used egg to the game box and place a level 1 red dragon in the summer nursery of your player board. You may hatch an egg in winter as well, but it will cost you three crystals and three food instead, placing the newly hatched dragon into the winter nursery. When you place a dragon in a nursery, it is not available until the following summer or winter. For example, if you hatch a dragon in the summer, it is not available until winter. When placing a dragon from the summer nursery onto the main board in winter, its movement is limited to its level a number of spaces away from your player board to the main board, with each of the outer actions being a distance of one from your player board. You may upgrade your dragons at the Cloud Dojo by paying the cost shown in the rulebook on page 20. The costs are the same in the summer and the winter seasons. If you wish to upgrade a level 1 blue dragon to a level 2 green dragon, you would pay one yellow crystal and one yellow gem. Return the level 1 blue dragon to the dragon supply, and add the level 2 green dragon to your player token. If later on you wish to upgrade the level 2 green dragon to a level 3 teal dragon, you would pay one blue gem and one blue diamond. The teal dragon's range is reduced by two, but gains double the amount shown on any level spaces. All of the level 3 dragon's abilities can be found on page 18 of the rulebook. You can also upgrade your level 3 dragons to a level 4 elder dragon of your player color, but this action must be performed at the Astral Arena, which is not available until the third new year of the game. 
When upgrading a level 3 dragon of any color to the level 4 elder dragon of your player color, you pay 3 of any combination of diamonds. Elder dragons lose any color abilities, but gain the ability to access any action space, covered or not. Remember, elder dragons have no distance restrictions, so may move to any space in the winter. When a dragon is removed from the elder space, that space is still available for other players to use, however, when paying the elder dragon, the payment does not go to the space as usual, but to the player board of the player owning that elder dragon. This brings us to the elder dragon spaces. You may choose to place one of your dragons on one of the elder dragon spaces at the bottom right of the main board. You may do this in the summer or winter, and you may choose to visit any of the six elders, but you must pay one ducat to the elder you are visiting, or you may pay three ducats to gain the elder's bonus twice. You may also choose to pay nothing, and collect the ducats from an elder space that was previously visited by other players. The white, gray, and black elder dragons offer a movement on the alchemy, telepathy, and necromancy tracks respectively and the Tan, Sienna, and Umber Elders offer you to use the Goblin Bank, the Mystic Volcano, or the Coin Maker. The Alchemy Track has bonuses that are gained in addition to income during the income phase. The Telepathy Track has bonuses that apply when exchanging at the Market, Gemsmith, Coin Maker, or the Jeweler, and will modulate trades according to the track. And with the Necromancy Track, you will feed your dragons according to the Necromancy Track instead of the Year Track. At the Goblin Bank, you may deposit resources into a bank account and collect interest during the New Year phase. Place the resources in the desired account and take the key and place it next to your player board to show that you were the owner of that account. If you ever have trouble finding a particular resource, you can always go to the Coin Maker, Merchant's Market, Gemsmith, or the Jeweler and make trades. Also, found at the bottom right of the main board, there are exchange rates for select resources that can be traded at any time during a player's turn. At the Mystic Volcano, you immediately excavate mountain spaces on your player board equal to the level of the dragon you are excavating with. You remove mountain spaces one at a time starting with the ones closest to the spaces that were left uncovered at the start of the game. Over time, you can reveal better bonuses to be selected during income in the new year phase. Some of the unique buildings found in Dragon Brood are the Floating Islands or the Elvish Caravan. For the first four new year phases, one or two sky tiles will reveal either the elvish caravan or the floating islands that offer amazing bonuses to the dragons that visit them. All of the floating islands and the elvish caravan require a level 3 dragon and are considered to be a distance of 3 away from any buildings on the main board. The cemetery is a place where players can retire their dragons permanently. Place your dragon on one of the six spaces and collect the bonuses shown. Return your player marker from underneath the dragon to your player board. These dragons will remain here until the end of the game. You can move through and also visit the field tiles, collecting the bonuses shown, but notice the benefits are far less than you receive at the revealed buildings. Now let's take a look at an example of some level spaces and some rank spaces found on the main board. The level spaces allow you to collect resources based on the level of the dragon that is occupying it. The rank spaces are only available in the winter season of select buildings, and unlike the level spaces, the rank spaces are only concerned with the color of the dragon occupying it, and cares not about the level. If you place a dragon on the left side of the crystal quarries in the summer, you will see that it is labeled level. If you are using a level 1 dragon, you will collect 4 crystals, in any combination of colors of your choice. If you are using a level 2 dragon, you will collect 7 crystals instead. On the right side of the crystal quarries, you will see that it is labeled rank. Let's say that a level 2 green dragon is placed on the crystal quarries in the winter, and another player uses a level 1 blue dragon in the same location. The color chart at the top of the crystal quarries will show the rank of the colors from left to right in order from first to last. The blue dragon may be a lower level, but it has a much higher rank on this space than a green dragon and therefore collects 5 crystals of the player's choice, and the green dragon collects 3 crystals for having a lower rank. Remember, rank spaces are only carried out in the spring, because rank spaces are only found on the right side of buildings in the winter. Combat spaces, which will be revealed throughout the game, provide the opportunity for great wealth from battles. Looking at the left side of the knight's castle, you'll see that it provides 4 gobloons to the winner of a battle in autumn, whereas on the right side, they receive 5 gobloons for winning a battle in spring. If only one player places a dragon on a combat space, they will receive the winning amount shown for having pillaged the building unopposed. 
When two players occupy the same combat space on the main board, they will go to battle in the autumn or spring season. Combat is carried out behind the combat screens where players can choose any number of crystals, gold, or food based on their dragon's level plus one in order to gain combat bonuses. The black player's green dragon is going to combat with the Sienna player's purple dragon. The black player looks at the combat chart and finds the row where the green dragon is listed. The black player decides if it is worth it to exchange the blue gems for blue crystals in order to gain the maximum possible strength boost. In the end, choosing to use the red crystals, in a sense forfeiting the combat in lieu of spending valuable resources so that the black player can steal two ducats from the Sienna player. Unaware of this, the Sienna player wants to secure victory and uses three crystals in the color that will grant the most strength, which happens to be red. Both players reveal their selections and resolve the combat. The Sienna player's purple dragon has one, and therefore collects four gobloons. The black player receives two gobloons for having lost, and also steals two ducats from the Sienna player. When a dragon loses combat, it goes to the nursery for the following season. For example, the black player's green dragon was defeated in the autumn, and therefore must be placed in the winter nursery. The Treasure Hollow is another combat location where, unlike other combat locations, players can battle for trinkets. The winner of a combat at the Treasure Hollow receives double their dragon's level in trinkets. The trinket's values range from 1 to 3. For example, if you win combat at the Treasure Hollow with a level 3 dragon, then you may select any number of trinkets whose values add up to 6. Say, 4 trinkets at a value of 1 each, and 1 trinket at a value of 2 for a total value of 6. Or maybe you would like two trinkets at a value of three each, which also totals a value of six. Trinkets may be traded in at any time for the bonuses shown, placing the trinket back on an available trinket space at the appropriate level. Or you may hold on to your trinkets until the end of the game, essentially limiting your opponent's options when they go to select trinkets in the future. You'll notice that the winter space at the Treasure Hollow is a level space, and provides trinkets in a total value equal to the level of the dragon occupying it. The Elvish Caravan allows you to buy trinkets with food, paying three food for two trinkets of any value, or you can sell a trinket at the Elvish Caravan and receive double the amount shown on the trinket. After any and all combat has been resolved on the main board in the spring season, the season track marker moves to the new year phase of the game. In the new year phase, players return their dragons from the main board to their player boards, feeding them one at a time according to the current year on the year track or according to their necromancy level on the magic track. Notice year one has no feed costs. Any dragons that you were required to feed but were unable to will go to the summer nursery and will not be available until the winter phase. However, if you do not want it to be sent to the summer nursery, you may return it to your winter nursery during the winter season instead of performing an action on the main board, thereby avoiding the feed costs during the new year phase. New buildings are revealed according to the year on the year track. In year one, this will always be the hollow, the farm, and island A. Next, you will collect income, selecting a number of bonuses from your player board equal to the number of level three dragons in your possession. It does not matter if they are in the nursery or with the other active dragons. Collect any interest from bank accounts you own, move the year track marker to the next year, and move the turn order counterclockwise. If this is the final new year of the game, you move to end game scoring after collecting interest from bank accounts. Your score is calculated by adding up the total value of all the treasure and trinkets on and around your player board, your magic track bonus, and the end game bonus tile. The player with the highest total value is the winner. On the rare occasion of a tie, the player with the most dragon coins wins. If still tied, the player with the most food wins. If still tied, the player with the most eggs wins, and if still tied, Maybe an epic rematch is in order? And that's how to play Dragon Brood. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you have a great time playing. Please visit BoardGameGeek.com to rate or review our games, leave a comment on our website at AstrologicGames.com, and go to Tabletopia.com to play any of Astrologic Games titles for free. See you next time!